What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Quantifier tutorial for you. So in this video I'm going to continue my series about um, creating an estimate using objects that we create inside of our model and then using the extension Quantifier in order to apply cost data to those. So um, in last week's video we talked about adding foundations. In this video we're going to talk about a couple different ways to add walls and apply cost data to those. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I will link to both of these extensions in the notes down below. So if you want more information, if you want to check them out, um, you can do that through that link. I will note that those are on sale through the end of the month. So um, this might be a really good time for you to go check out those extensions and see if they're a good fit for you. All right, so I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Um, one way is going to involve using the extension Profile Builder. In order to come in here and apply cost to an object that we create using a profile, the other is going to be using just a wall that we've created um, using the push-pull tool inside of this model. And the approach is going to be a little bit different on each one of these. Um, one thing I do want to kind of focus on is the ability to at least somewhat check your work and um, make sure sure that your quantities are coming out of here right. As an estimator, I always like to double check and make sure because I don't like getting things wrong because that can get really problematic. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the uh, first method which doesn't require profile builder. And so in order to do that, what I have here is we have our concrete foundation that we talked about last week. And we can turn that on and off. Um, I might, I'll leave it on for right now, but it gives you kind of a reference for where your foundation is going to be. And so maybe what we we would do in a case like this one is depending on how your concrete slab is going to sit on this wall or interface with this wall you might do this a couple different ways let's say that this was going to be like a slab on grade on the inside of this and we're just going to assume that uh, your actual walls are going to sit on top of this foundation that may not be a hundred percent right but we'll go ahead and assume that for right now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push pull this object in three inches and then I'm going to push pull it out three inches as well. And so what we've done here is we've created a profile or we've created a wall that we can now push pull up and down inside of SketchUp. So you can see how I can push pull this up and down and uh, this wall is sitting on our concrete foundation and again this may not be exactly how this would sit in real life but it'll work for what we're doing right here. So the first thing we're going to do um, when we do this the manual way is we're going to double click on this and we're just going to make this whole thing a group and so that way we don't have to worry about this merging with the rest of our model or anything like that. And then once we do that what we're going to do is we're going to push pull this up and down to whatever the height of your walls are going to be for their first level. So let's say they were going to be 12 feet. We'd push pull these to 12 feet. And so if you remember what we did last week is we placed all of our walls on a layer in order to apply the pricing. So in this case, I'm going to do that just a little bit differently because this is not a profile builder profile. In the second method, we will approach this a little bit differently. So if you do this manually with your walls, the way that we're going to apply our cost data to the outside of this is going to be we're going to use a material. And the reason for that, at least at the moment, and I, as far as I know, this is the case. Right now, if we were to take this and we were to create a, a layer like uh, walls or something like that, and we were to put this on that walls layer and then we would apply the cost data to the layer like we did last week. So if I was to click on this drop down, click on walls and then add a cost for our walls and we'll just call this framing for right now. We'll go ahead and give it a code of 0901 and then uh, use our input as square feet and then apply this unit cost because this object wasn't created in uh, in Profile Builder, it's not reading the areas properly. And what that means is, um, if you look at this whole thing, if you were to select, so if you were to select all of your exterior walls, so if I was to go around here and do a shift click on each one of these like this, you can see how what this does is this gives me an area of like 2100 square feet, right? But if you look at the cost that's being associated with this, it's only associating $451 with it. The reason why is for whatever reason, this is coming in here and this is reading this top area. 
and that's what it's applying the cost data to. So if I was to run with my calculator and take this 90 square feet, so 90.369, and take it by the $5 a square foot we added in here, that gives us our $451. So because this wasn't created in Profile Builder, this isn't a smart assembly, and so it's not reading it properly. So if you come in here and you create your walls manually like this, the way that I would recommend doing it is actually picking a material. And so maybe in this case, we'd take like a white side material or something like that and then we would use that material to apply our cost data rather than the layer and so what I mean by that is now if we take this object and instead of adding the cost data to the layer like this what we would do instead is we would go in here and we would add cost data based on the material. And so what that means is we would go in here to our material cost data and we would find that cladding siding white material and we would associate our costs with that material. Again, if this is a wall that you've created without using Profile Builder. So the way that I would do that is I would, use, I would select everywhere where this cladding siding white material is gonna be and I would start adding my cost data based on that. So like let's say we had 09 zero one framing we would add whatever that unit cost is in here and I'm just kind of throwing numbers at these I'm not actually looking up realistic numbers but let's say we wanted to associate something else like let's say we had framing let's say we had um, let's say we had plywood so let's say we had plywood on here, you know, we would add another unit cost of whatever that would be over here. Um, you could add a waste factor in here if you want. So you can see how what I'm doing is I'm just taking all of the different aspects of this wall, so whatever siding is going for right now, and I'm just applying costs associated with that. So we would also do like an interior drywall or something like that at whatever that's running a square feet square foot so and we could add waste factors and all of that and then once we do that what this is going to do is that's going to apply a cost to each one of these items everywhere where this cladding siding white material is showing up so if I click on OK and then I click off of this object and back onto it, um, this gives you a cost of $61,534. And to check that, what we could do is we could go in here and we could just figure out what our overall unit cost is gonna be. So five plus four plus 15 plus three. So this is $27 a square foot or a face square foot for this assembly. Well, we could just go in here and we could go inside this group, do an area of material and we would find that this has an area of 2193. So we would take our $27 times 2193.75, and that would give us our value of 59,231. And then you have to remember that a couple of these had waste percentages associated with them. So if we go back in and look at this again, if we just click on this, you can see how the value being associated with the walls here makes sense. So we can go in and we can double check things using this method really easily. And I'm a huge advocate of double checking things inside of your, inside of your models when you're using them to create estimates. And so the other way that we could do this is we could also create a wall profile. And for this tutorial, by the way, I'm not going to get into um, creating a wall that creates all the individual framing members and stuff like that. I will link to a tutorial on how to create that. And if you guys are interested, I could do a video about creating a smart wall that actually models all of those things in here. But what we're going to do now is for this other way of looking at this, and I'm going to go in and erase out some of this extra stuff real quick. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the Profile Builder Profile function in order to quickly create a wall in here. And uh, this is going to be a smart profile, so it's going to be a little bit better at generating those materials. And so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to draw a profile for our wall. So assuming this is going to be a 6 inch thick wall by 12 feet high, We're just going to draw a profile of what this wall is going to look like and then I'm going to double click on it and select it. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a profile. 
we're going to create a profile based on this wall. So we click on the profile dialog right here and then we're just going to come in here with this selected and we're going to click the plus button and we're going to go ahead and we're going to name this wall 6 inch by 12 foot and click OK. And so what that's going to do is that's going to create a wall profile based on this profile that we uh, drew in here. And so what we're going to do with this is we're going to set our insertion point to bottom middle. So that means that this is going to insert this based on the bottom middle point here. We're going to go ahead and tell it to apply a material. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to use a different material. So um, instead of this cladding siding white, maybe what I would do is I would add the cladding siding tan just because this is a slightly different example. But we're going to go in here and we'll use the cladding siding tan and we're going to put this on the walls layer. And remember placing this on a layer is going to be really important if we're using Profile Builder. So um, because we're going to use that cost by layer option again. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to take this whole thing and we've got our wall profile created. I'm just going to double click on this and then do a shift click to deselect the face so that I have this perimeter path selected. And then all I have to do is click on the build along path function. And you can see how what Profile Builder does is this actually comes in here and this creates this whole thing um, really quickly um, based on the path that I had selected. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to apply this in Quantifier just to see how this is a little bit different than when we did this manually. So because this is a profile created within Profile Builder, it's a lot smarter of an assembly than this one over here. It actually has the proper square footage data associated with these faces. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Qu Quantifier and remember how before in the last video we applied our cost data based on a layer? We're going to do that same thing here. So we're just going to click on the button for layer dollars and we're just going to find the things that are on the walls layer and apply that cost data to them. So we're going to do the same thing we did before where we're going to do a 9, 0, 1 and we're just going to call this one framing PB. We're going to set our input to square feet and we're going to set our unit cost to $5. And we're just going to go through and we're going to add these same items that we did before. And we're going to click OK. And so what this is going to do is this is going to go in and this is going to apply that same kind of cost data to this object inside of our model. And I'm not 100% sure if I put the waste factors in here quite the way they needed to be. Um, but what we can do is we can now go in here and we can take a look at this and uh, do a little bit of a comparison. All right, and so one thing I want to do when I do this is I want to come in here and I want to change these units so that I can do a quick double check on what's coming out of this because I really want for it to make sense. And so um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my report settings and I'm just going to change this so that my length and my area are in things that actually make sense to me. So I'm going to change my feet, uh, my length to feet, my area to square feet, and my volume to cubic yards. So that way I can look at this because I really think in that way. And so it's really Really easy to double check based on these profile builders if these are in here properly. So like for example, I have 180 lineal feet of this condition. Well, it's real easy for me to come in here and do the 180.8125 times 12 feet just to verify that my area is, prop is correct in here. And then based on the fact that I know my assembly is going to be about $27, I can take this times $27 and do kind of the same thing that I did before where I can just do a quick check on what that cost should be just to make sure that I'm in in the right ballpark. And I do recommend always going back and double checking just to make sure that things make sense. So if you're creating estimates, you always need to be double checking to make sure things actually make sense. Um, but what we can do is we can go in here and we can run that same cost detail report that we ran before where we would just select this whole thing. And we could go ahead and we could create that report. And you can see how this report comes in here with all of those costs that you had associated with all of these different items. So you can see how my framing is in here, my plywood, all those different things from Profile Builder are in here. And then we could take that and export that to a CSV file just like we did before. 
All right, so the last thing I want to look at really quick, just so that you have kind of an idea, um, because you might have noticed the costs between these two items are a little bit different. And uh, so when I click on this first item, you can see how the cost comes out at $61,000. For this item over here, the cost comes out at 60861 And so there's a slight difference in here, and the reason there's a slight difference is because of the way Profile Builder is calculating the cost. Um, um, associated with the layer function as opposed to this item right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button for the cost inspector and you can see how we can click back and forth between these two items to see all the costs associated with them which is a really great feature. Well what you're going to notice is you're going to notice that the area, the square footage that's being associated with the profile builder assembly is slightly less than the area that's being associated with this item where we calculate by um, by face material right here. The reason for that is because of your lineal footage of your wall and the way that's being um, calculated. So if you look at this, this item is being calculated specifically based on the material that's being applied to a face. So it's taking this wall from here to here and calculating based on that material. Well over here with the profile builder assembly what it's doing is it's calculating this based on the lineal footage of um, the wall being shown in here. So if I was to come in here and this gets a little bit complicated but I'll try to explain it as best I can. Where this item over here is drawing a wall is just measuring a face from this point to this point what the profile builder assembly is doing is it's actually measuring the wall based on the length of this path. So this path has a certain length associated with it and a height. So what that's doing, if I was to go in here and hide this, is that means that path is being calculated to this point instead of to the extra point over here. So um, what that means is you're basically measuring by lineal footage based on height um, as opposed to over here where you've just kind of drawn a face in and you're measuring based on that face. Um, I don't necessarily find that to be a big deal. I think it's something that you pick up um, with your waste factors. So I don't think it's a huge difference when it comes to calculating your costs or anything like that, you just need to be aware of the way that things are being calculated just like you do anything else in an estimate. So, but uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you think about that, if that even made sense, anything like that. So like all of the estimating videos that I do, I feel like that got a little long, a little fast, and a little rambly. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you found this helpful, if what I said made sense, or even if you're using this extension in order to create estimates. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.